Пациентка 55 лет из анамнеза в течение двух лет отмечает периодически возникающие боли в верхних отделах живота. В ходе обследования по результатам магнитно-резонансной томографии органов брюшной полости, головки поджелудочной железы, выявлено пугристое многокамерное инкапсулированное образование 18 на 20 мм без признаков лимфоделепатии брюшной полости. Планируется выполнить функционную версию опухоли головки поджелудочной железы под контролем эндосонографии с целью дифференциальной диагностики между цистоденомой и цистоденокарциномой поджелудочной железы. Оператор Соломицын Евгений Геннадьевич. Спасибо за внимание. the operating room in St. Petersburg, together with our colleagues. You're welcome. Can you hear us? Peter. No. We, it seems to me that now we can, now we can uh, hear you. Please, Peter. Okay. Thank you for inviting me. It's an honor to be here and to uh, do live demonstrations in, uh, in a patient with, with a cystic uh, lesion in the head of the pancreas. It's, uh, it's uh, actually uh, many years back that I started uh, doing FNA and uh, I think this could be a case for FNA as well. But uh, let's discuss that. Just want to present something to you. Um, you know, in, in, the, in the Nordic countries and also in, in parts of Germany, the anatomy is a little, uh, uh, the, the image is turned around. And if you follow me, then I think you recognize that this is distal and this is proximal. So, we, so when I do FNA, bit a bit of, where we, where we, now, yes, now we have the US picture. Okay, so the slides, uh, this is distal, this is proximal. So the needle will come in from this side, and in other parts of the world, it will come from, from the other side. I already introduced the uh, transducer into the duodenum, so I'm placed in the second part of the duodenum. And what we see here is part of the pancreas, here, the aorta can be seen here, and now I turn the transducer a little. And what you see here is the cystic lesion. As you can see it here, this is a multicentrated process. And uh, imaging wise, it looks to be most likely a serous cystadenoma. So you think so the, from the image, you think it's uh, more like as a such kind of vision to confirm the diagnosis? You know, this is a field where we really need progress because imaging-wise, I'm only 50% sure that this is a serious system of normal. It can still be a this system. And then we have the possibility to biopsy and to do CEA analysis. And with CEA, we are able to go up to 60% to differentiate whether it's a mucinous cyst or a non mucinous cyst. The treatment is, of course, quite different because we know that this is a serious cyst abnormal. There's no need to do any surgery for it. If we know it's a mucinous cyst, we have to do a surgical procedure. Look at this, I can do color double imaging, things like that, and confirm that there is no vessel flow inside uh, at this point. I can do contrast enhanced uh, imaging, probably showing that septations have, uh, have vessel signals. But it doesn't lead to anything else, but should we do surgery or should we not? We can do Finally, aspiration, and um, that helps something. We 
across up to between 50 and 60 percent, we can get final diagnosis. Meaning, to show this is a serious system trauma or this is a muscular system trauma. But that is cytology. We would like to have cytology as well. Peter, if you don't mind, just one minute we will leave for the final stage and you know, as we say, I'll come back to you, okay? Okay, fine. Peter, yeah. sorry for delay, but we come back to you. Okay, no problem. We see the US image and now we see you and Evgeny Ivan. Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming back to us again. It's, uh, you know, I, I owe to the companies who have sponsored this to tell you that we are using the Pentax uh, equipment, which is uh, US endoscopes. The, the small uh, probe, the endoscope. And uh, we're going to do a biopsy now. Um, as you know, I did my first US FNA in 1991, so it's uh, about 26 years ago, and uh, I think it has turned out to be a success. Mediglobe was the company that was uh, foreseeing at that time. And uh, Medico was also the first on the market with uh, US needles. We designed the needles together with Medico, and based on this needle principle, any other needles on the market are uh, made like uh, we initially did uh, the first needle with a, with a detachable handle and with a piston that can move a needle uh, in and out. So, right now, I have the consideration, should we, which kind of, of, of size of needles should we use? And what about core needles? The problems with core needles right now is that there are meta-analysis showing completely that there's no difference when it comes to cores between the standard needle and the pro core needle. That's for sure. We don't still know about the other core needles, the quiet and sharp needles, but we have to see how that turns out. In my, uh, at my hospital, we are right now in the study phase with a through the needle microbiopsy forceps, where we put a microbiopsy forceps through a 19 gauge needle and take samples. And it looks actually very promising consisting uh, That's an interesting we don't have this available. Yeah. But we don't have this available right now and I think we would try to get it a uh, specimen out with standard 22 gauge needle. Um, if it is a serious system aroma, it is uh, in many cases unsuccessful, unfortunately, and as, as I told you, this is a field where we need progress in order to better find the patients and save those that don't need surgery for no surgery. But um, anyway, I will try and get it. If the lesion is in a position where I have a tendency to move out, and one of the reasons for this is that it is a small transducer I use. I usually prefer the therapeutic endoscope when I'm in the duodenum these cases. But let's see how it turns out. As you can see now, the lesion is clearly missing here, and it's, it's, it's more than the first uh, demonstrated station by CT show. The lesion is more likely at the size of 25 minutes. So let's see whether we can get a little into that. I have to retract a little and try to avoid that it pops out. I already have a sheet in place. 
And the first, the first thing I want to do now is to get the needle out. And if you look, right now I move it on the left corner side. Follow me here. We'll try to follow you. If you look at this side, yes. the needle tends to come out this direction. So I need a little more retraction. And right now the needle would be too parallel. And I have to see whether I can move it further back and use the elevator as well. It's a round style, so I have to retract it. Uh, and now the needle comes in. Can you see it? Yes, we can see it. So, if we take the stylet, take the stylet away, and then um, we uh, aspirate. Usually, this kind of cyst doesn't contain that much fluid. And in my experience, I have to get good material for for uh, CDA and, and uh, Avalanche and CDA 99. Now the needle is moved back and forth, the piston is controlled, and I can exactly see where I'm at with the needle, as you can see here. And a little material is coming up. Usually also these lesions tend to be pretty Bloody. Um, and we'll send it for cytology. Yeah. It's out. Jerry is speaking. Yeah. Uh, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the audience, which are the risks yeah. related to uh, FNA within this system of practice? Because the risk should, should be balanced. Be balanced be balance against. Should be balanced against yes. the benefits but you know, of the diagnosis. I quite agree with you. You should always think about the risk for the patient. And there are two risks this time. Of course, bleeding is always a risk. It's very rare that, uh, that there is a, a significant bleed. The other thing is pancreatitis. Uh, this is also something that you have to consider. And secondly, uh, infection of the cyst. Therefore, we always give antibiotics. Uh, we usually give uh, cephalosporin, cinesef, one and a half uh, gram of that. So I move the needle now back and forth. You know, I think if we can get histology or cytology out that for sure demonstrate this is a serious system phenomenon, I think this would be of benefit and also make a decision uh, not to, to do any surgery. I think that's fine now. We also have some material in it, as you can see, it's pretty bloody. And now I retract the needle, lock the piston, and unscrew it as well. It's a material. Another question. The US patent is really in a favor of serious system and all. Which is the risk of this diagnosis? And it is far more uh, a mysterious situation. Which is the risk? It's 1%, 2%, 5%, 10 50, 50%, 50%. The risk you so make a misdiagnosis. The, 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 the uh, sensitivity of imaging alone to differentiate a non mucinous from a mucinous system is 50%. We always now uh, in our PhD project always do microbiopsy uh, forceps uh, from these kind of objects. And confocal microscope. Yes, and uh, with uh, subclass, we are actually able to subclassify mucinous cysts um, based on immunohistochemistry. Uh, and we also do uh, molecular analysis, uh, next generation sequencing uh, in this time. Because we need better, we need, need better examinations to finally uh, decide for these patients. So, Peter, another question, sorry, Mr. Alexander. 
And uh, once you make the diagnosis, how you follow up the patient's substitution is confirmed. So you just uh, make a uh, follow up with the uh, MRI or you still keep going with the US? You know, there are strict guidelines on how to follow these patients. If, um, it's, if it's a side branch IPMN, there is a strict follow up with includes uh, MR scan. And if there are growth, uh, worrisome features, things like that, US is also part of it. So the algorithm for these uh, lesions usually two and a half centimeter. I think within three to six months, a new imaging would be performed either MR or US to see whether it grows. If the growth rate is within, I think, four, three millimeter or more, uh, surgery is advised within, uh, within uh, six months. Either, if you don't mind, we would like to visit the operating room with Thomas, right? Yes, thank you. I don't mind. Please.